Have you ever considered a move overseas? Maybe you're really overwhelmed by the idea. You're like, I could never pick up my whole family. I don't know anything about this country. I couldn't really do it. Could I get a job? Is education okay? All these questions. If you've ever thought about this, ever interested in this topic, my channel is for you. I have not only moved from the US to New Zealand once, but twice. So I have a very interesting perspective to share and I do so on my channel. So today though, we're gonna talk about moving overseas. I get this question all the time, what should I bring? We're gonna tackle three main things. My car, my house, and should I bring all my crap? <laughs> that's what we're gonna talk about today. So stay tuned if that's interesting to you. If you wanna find out more about what it's like to live overseas, subscribe to my channel below and let's get started. Okay, welcome back. I am excited to talk to you about moving overseas. What should I bring? We're gonna talk about the three main things, your car, your house, and all of your stuff, okay? So before we get started, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the fact that my perspective is that it is a good idea for everyone at some point in their life to sell all their stuff and start over. Now, I know that not everybody is my personality, and obviously I'm not a hoarder. <laughs> or someone that cares deeply about stuff, okay? But I just think it is just a great experience. I've done it three times over now, but I think it is a great experience to sell all your crap and start over, okay? Because you know what? That couch that you bought 20 years ago, you're a different person. You have different taste. There's nicer furniture out there now. It's time to get a new one. Okay, so that is just a little background as we step into this. now. I just need to just put a little disclaimer on here that everybody's different, okay? This is just my perspective. Everybody's personality and value system is different, but keep in mind, this is just my perspective and what I've learned on this journey. So number one, <clears throat> let's talk about your car. Do I think that you should ship your car overseas if you move overseas? This one's a hard one for me because I am not a car person. So I really see no value in actually talking about this. <laughs> I do not think you should bring your car when you move overseas. Couple logical reasons. When I moved to New Zealand, they drive on the left side of the road. So, and so the wheel, the driving wheel is on the other side of the car. So that just that alone is reason for me to not bring my car. Now, it all depends where you're moving. Where, what side of the road they drive on, that sort of thing. If you're really into cars, if you have a really special car, you know, then maybe you consider that. But when I have looked at the cost for that, and I'm not going to quote any numbers because it all depends, it is outrageously expensive <laughs> to do that. So you got to put the cost value uh, formula together in your mind and decide if that's right for you. But my advice, sell your car take the money and get a new car or a used car. I don't really think people should buy new cars, but that's a different topic uh, <clears throat> when you move overseas. Okay, number two, what should I do with my house? Should I sell it? What if I hate it and I wanna come back? Should I just rent it just in case? Uh, I just don't, there's so much decision to make about moving and where we're gonna live there that I can't even possibly wrap my head around selling my house here. Okay. So here are a couple of thoughts about what you should do with your house. <clears throat> I think that both options are very valid. We have, uh, we, when we moved, we had to move quickly. And so we rented our house every time. And I'm still in the process of now selling houses, but we were also comfortable with renting properties and had been involved in um, real estate in general. And so we were comfortable with that and we had processes set up. But just because something is not new is just totally new to you and totally foreign to you doesn't mean it's not a good idea okay it is not hard to learn a process it is not hard to get a property management company so it may make sense for you right now the real estate market if you live in the states is really good so probably a good time to sell but if it isn't a good market i would say don't sell it and just rent it and you can do everything within a in a framework <clears throat> that you're comfortable with do whatever framework makes sense for you, <laughs> okay? If you want a property manager, if you want 
certain paperwork established, if you feel like you need a lawyer, just do that. Okay, do whatever is going to make it comfortable for you. Um, and then when you move to your new country, I do recommend renting because there is so much you don't know. There is so much to learn. We moved here. We didn't know one person. We didn't know anything about anything. We didn't know where we want to send our kids to school. We didn't know anything. And so we weren't going to buy <laughs> and we still haven't. We in fact still rent here. Um, and there's other reasons for that, but, uh, yeah. So rent when you go to your new country, rent or sell and don't be afraid of renting. Okay. If you want some advice on renting, I'm happy to help you with that. But yeah, so probably though, if you can sell your house, it's nice to have the money um, when you're starting a new life because it just is expensive. The first time we moved here, we did not get payment from the jobs, but the second time we moved, they helped pay for the move. And so that was much nicer. So that it all depends on all of these kind of factors. Obviously, if you have a company that's willing to pay for things and you want to bring it, do it or just sell it and take the money and just start new because it's fun. Now, the third and final thing we're gonna talk about, what should we do with all of our crap? Okay, because we all have so much stuff and what should we do? Should we store it? Should we ship it? Should we store some of it and ship some of it? What should we do? Okay, so let me tell you what we did. The first time we moved here, we were only planning on coming here for two years, so we didn't bring anything. We each got two 50 pound bags and that's all we had. We had what, 12 suitcases <laughs> and that's all we came with. And we had nothing when we got here. And so um, <clears throat> we just figured it out. So what we did is we put, we had to move quickly. And so a lot of our stuff ended up going into a storage uh, cause I had a rental property and could just have a garage for free. So it just wasn't a big deal. Uh, I also stored, you know, important things like at my parents' house or at a friend's house. Uh, but we were planning on coming back, so it didn't make sense for us to sell everything, but we did sell a lot. We sold a lot of our furniture. Like, do I want to pay? Like, how much is it going to cost to store all these couches, all these beds? Do I love them that much? Right? And that's the question. And sometimes it's hard to think about it. And it seems overwhelming, but it's not. And let me tell you, the key to selling your stuff is Facebook Marketplace. Okay, it's amazing. So there's plenty of other things out there, depending on where you live. If you're in New Zealand, it's Trade Me. If you're in the US, it's Craigslist or all these different platforms where you can sell things. But Facebook Marketplace takes no cut and it's very easy. And what I always did was set up everything to be what I wanted to do. So I had a lot of stuff to sell. Did I wanna be driving around and dropping all my stuff off and making this all complicated? No, it was, here's my stuff. This is the price, it's not negotiable, and you have to pick it up by tomorrow. I put all these stipulations. Again, it comes back to making things work the way that's comfortable for you. And that was comfortable for you. I was busy as, okay? <laughs> and so I am not running my stuff around. People need to come to me. I had garage sales, I had um, Facebook Marketplace, and I sold everything. Thousands of dollars worth of stuff, which was really, I'm telling you, the feeling that you get when you sell all your stuff it is really freeing. It is a really freeing. <laughs> and I'm not like really dedicated to my stuff either, but it was great. So I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, so should you ship furniture? Should you ship personal items? So the second time we moved, we came here permanently. Okay. And so we thought, yes. And the company was helping us pay for things is right. Like, yes, we should bring some of our personal items. We knew what it was like to just use everybody. We just used, um, we borrowed a lot of stuff. We bought things from thrift stores or op shops as they're called here, opportunity shops in New Zealand. I like that name. And, uh, and that was great. But like, we kind of wanted some of our own stuff, like some of the things that we really valued. So we didn't do a very large shipment. We did a pretty small shipment. Um, but we, and we just kind of took what we wanted. <clears throat> here are my thoughts on that. Now that I have lived here for almost three years since then, I wouldn't do it again. I shipped my stuff. I didn't pay for it. I still, I think the shipment total was like a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. It wasn't that expensive. We didn't take that, but we didn't take any furniture. So we sold all of our furniture, but it was just like, I took some pictures. I took some appliances. I took things, you know, that I just really, I just wanted, right? We all have those things and <laughs> I wouldn't do it again. 
And here's the reason why. Number one is now that I've lived here longer, I have really officially figured out where to get everything at a reasonable price. And so the fact that I paid all this money <laughs> to ship these baking tins doesn't make sense. I also brought my KitchenAid mixer, which I loved, and some other, like my, uh, and, and there's things here that they don't have here, and I knew that, and so that's why I brought them. So I brought like a waffle iron, like a, like a Belgian waffle maker, and I probably wouldn't do any of this again, and this is why, because, and I also knew this as well, like, um, you have to get a step-down converter because of the different voltage from the U.S. to New Zealand. So take that into consideration. If you're thinking about any sort of electronic that would need to be plugged in that has some sort of heating unit or something that, you know, like a big motor, I wouldn't bring it. That's my advice to you. I could get a really nice mixer for $80. Why wouldn't I just get that? <laughs> and I ended up selling it. I ended up selling all these things saying, hey, you need a step-down converter, but you can have this. And I just, cause I just didn't want to be moving it around. So my advice is essentially, I did do both. I did no shipment and I did a shipment. And now three years later, I'd say, I wouldn't have done the shipment again. So that's my advice to you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. My next video is going to be questions and answers. And I'm gonna answer all of your questions. So please take a moment and comment any questions you have about moving because I want this channel to be helpful to you. I want to talk about things that are important to you, that's on your mind, that you wanna get answered and not just what I think you wanna know. So please comment below with your questions and your comments and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next week.